The Irish Sea has long been considered one of the deadliest stretches of open water in the world. Until now, there has been no record of an attempt to conquer the crossing between England and the Isle of Man in soft hull inflatable boats, but this was about to change. We decided to stamp our names into history by assembling a crew of the most courageous, heroic individuals we know to man a flotilla of sibs over 40 miles of treacherous seas from St Bees to Douglas. Skippering boat Jan would be Rob, joined by first mate Cobbo. Boat 2 would be manned by Captain Al and his cabin boy Ramsey. In his endeavour to set the world record for smallest sib to cross the Irish Sea, Sam would be soloing the 3.6 metre green machine. This is the story of the most perilous adventure we have ever attempted. Everything we had done for over a year had been in preparation for this challenge. Would this be a step too far? Would we prove ourselves heroes or be humbled by the mighty force of Mother Nature? This is 3am coaches. The day had finally arrived. Let's go! We arrived at St. B's before 5 and began setting up the boats in time for high tide. Look how calm that water is. The water looks so good today boys. I'm so buzzing. In. Get up! We can't quite see the Isle of Man yet, but the water looks unreal. We couldn't have asked for better than this. Who's like it? Enacting the process that had been rehearsed thousands of times in our heads, we readied our inventories and completed our tests. Get all the last checks done. We're almost ready to go. The time is five o'clock. That means we've got 50 minutes until high tide. Busy away. The green machine did have a puncture before we started, but we've patched it up as best we can. So we'll see if that holds over the 40 mile journey. Making me a bit nervous. Okay. 40 miles, world record attempt on the green machine, even though it's got a puncture. I'm wearing a wetsuit today just in case because that puncture is looking mighty threatening. Within five minutes of being pumped up, it's lost a considerable amount of air. So, scary stuff. We loaded ourselves up and donned our life jackets before performing the final checks and turning our radios to channel Yam. This is the green machine coming now, Juan 420. Yeah, that's solid. We're on. Like zip yourself up and that. Hello. Yeah, let's this one. Testing, testing. Yeah. We're almost ready to gun. Get sun creamed up, boys. Life jacket. Get in, boys. We're away. The green's already losing air. Oh, no. World record attempt on a leaky boat. Oh no. Oh, found the culprit of the deflation. That, if you can, you can hear that that is letting air out. That is not great at all, so we're gonna patch it before we go. Make the edge, give it a good lather. That's a good sign. There's the puncture repaired as much as we can before taking it across the Irish Sea. We're going to set up the bearing on the GPS. We're doing the sight and go. How many? Two, four, six. There we go. Lock direction, project waypoint, set course. Unbelievable. There you go, Rob. Direction locked. We are still losing air. Oh, gosh. That is mega, that. You're just gonna have to record it the whole time, aren't you? Yeah. World record attempt on a punctured boat. With the bearing set, we lifted the boats to the water's edge and assembled the team on the ramp. We wished each other luck and considered the voyage that lay ahead. Right then, boys. Are we all ready? Is everything sorted? Yes, sir. And let me tell you, there isn't a team in the world that I would rather attempt this alongside. Even by making it to this stage, you've proven yourselves heroes. However, 
know that this will be the most ruthless and challenging test that we have ever attempted together. Come on, boys. Let's go. Away into the waves, men, for adventure. Brotherhood. Come on. Go. All right, Johnny. Catch in a bit, Ed. Go on. Sam set off first, marking the beginning of his world record attempt. He rowed out into deep enough water to drop his propeller, praying the Suzuki would fire up without a hitch. It drops in, chokes out, emergency clip attached. Let's go! Yes! We're in! And we're away! Let's go! Launched. Next in the water was boat one, who were hoping that their 1970 Johnson engine would run and endure the entirety of the ruthless mission ahead. Mary Joanne, this is the green machine. Do you copy? Over. We copy green machine. Over. That's good to hear, boys. Let's fucking have it. Let's have it. This is going to be ruthless. The water around St. B's Head is infamous for its chop, as the swells reflect off the sheer cliffs. This cross current creates waves big enough to flip our tiny vessels if tackled at the wrong angle. So the plan was to take them head on in search of more favourable currents further north. With the boys leaving the bay, Tom and I got boat 2 in the water and wrestled with the Yamaha to get it started. So far it had proven to be temperamental and this first start had been playing on my mind for months. Ready? Yeah, yeah. This is the Red, red Ramsdale, engine is on and we are catching up. Now that all three boats are up and running, the only thing between us and the island was 40 miles of open sea. That's St B's head and we're leaving the English coast behind. Jesus! <laughs> right, we're away. The Red Dale is in. The other half 25 is on. Get on! And now, we're going to fucking blow it. Ready Ramsey? Ready! No! Come on! No. Oh, I see Captain. Captain of the Red Tail. Let's go. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my God, I just did a full jump. This is serious, boys. We need to stay together, so I'm gonna need to speed up. I'm soaked already. Whoa. How's it going, bro? Whoa! Look at the size of some of these waves. This is very perilous. Let's see if we make it. Oh! Though the 420s ate up the massive swells, green was already struggling. And as it tossed me around, I held on for dear life, pushing the puncture to the back of my mind.
So we're currently waiting for Alex and Tom who set off a little bit later than us. But I can't see them. Oh no. Our first mission was to catch up with the boys. I can see Tom's nose going in the air. There they are! No respawns! No respawns! Oh my god! Yes! I can see them! Rob's checking the GPS to see if we're still going in the right direction. And we're about two, three miles in and it's already been ruthless. The size of these waves is unbelievable. Oh. Come the boys! Get in! Yes, the boys! No response! No Yay! Here's the boys! Yes, heroes! Now that the whole team were back together, the heroic nature of the mission at hand set in. Adrenaline surged through our veins. We had caught up, and for the first time, our dream felt within reach. The flotilla was now in formation, with morale high, we battled on against the waves. Fuck me! Yes! No! The tiller arm snapped! Oh, I'm gonna have to take that off. We were past the head. The current had straightened out, and the waves became more predictable. Their size and direction still threatened to capsize the green if we followed our intended course west, so we pushed on. A less direct route would mean we had more distance to cover, so I opened up my throttle. The 15 horsepower was holding up incredibly, easily keeping pace with the 25s. With less gear and no crew, the green was much lighter than the other boats. alone came with the necessity for unceasing vigilance. Such a massive mission. Look at these boys. My tiller arm's already snapped off. The sunshine is out. We can still see the English coastline. And there are the boys. Get in. The Irish Sea was testing these vessels to their limit. The 1972 Johnson was performing well. Unbeknownst to me, the vibrations and slams were taking their toll on this 50 year old engine. Fuel lines come off. We put it back on. Get in. First try. Let's go. These conditions were proving thoroughly challenging for our motors. And even though the 15 was tightly clamped to the back of the green, the larger waves were threatening to knock it off the flimsy back panel. I'm dead! I'm dead! I'm dead! Doubts were beginning to creep in about the previously reliable Suzuki as it was showing signs that it may not have been up for this brutal test. Well, he's actual engine was coming off. Eh? He's actual engine, yeah. Ah, Cobo, drink some more. Get up, the boys! Get up! What's wrong with you? Whoa! Almost fucking went overboard then. The kill switch. I thought I'd lost that then. Bloody hell. Let's see if she'll start now. Come on. Don't give up on me now. Please, 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 please. 
choke out. No choking. Yes, 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 yes. We're on, we're on, we're on. We're back on. That is good, good news. Oh. I thought we were done for then, I'm not gonna lie. Right, let's get ourselves away. This is Green Machine, you're going too far north. Too far north. Let's go and see if we can catch them up and tell them. We're really gonna have to try and make some progress now and catch up with the boys. The conditions began to ease and we had overcome the tall waves and unfavorable currents for now. Through the receding clouds appeared land and I headed on triumphantly, thinking we were halfway there. Ten litres in. I've already put ten litres in. The boys were terrified. <laughs> oh God, I'm this is properly ruthless. However, something felt seriously wrong and I dropped off to consult the compass. What it showed was that my fears were justified and we had been completely disorientated by the waves. So close boys, I can taste it! All he could taste was Haggis, Buckfast and Free University, because that was the Isle of Witton, which isn't even an island and is part of the Scottish mainland. Yeah! <laughs> so boat one, with the GPS, was taking us too far north towards the Whitton and not towards the Isle of Man. What we thought was the Isle of Man is actually Scotland. Ow! It's actually Scotland and we've just seen the Isle of Man start to poke out from behind the clouds and it is a lot further away. Sam suggested the island there that we're looking at is not an island and is in fact Scotland. So, we are still 40 miles away from the Isle of Man. What are you saying, boys? We all got rid of. You need to catch us back up again, but us boys need to keep down, eh? Why? Johnson seems to be away at the half craft, yeah? What, the Johnson's on half craft? Aye. Yeah. No way. Doesn't seem to be running that fast, eh? So, just need to bear with us there. Eh? Well, you want to drive it for a yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Though I had got the Johnson back up to full speed, I knew it was on borrowed time. We've taken this opportunity just to fill it up for 10 litre. I'll be honest. Our fuel wasn't even halfway, halfway used. And we've got another 10 litre and two fives, so fuel wise, epic. And all I'm hoping now is that once this fuel's in, it's a one pull start. After refueling, we realised that boat one was still travelling too far north. And after no response on the radio, I sent the green speeding off to catch up and correct their course. I can see boat two over there on the horizon. That's the first time I've seen them in a little while. Boat one's there and we're setting off in the right direction now. I had a funny feeling about the direction that we were heading uh, and I looked through my compass and realized that we were going the wrong way. And now we've got to turn around and travel southwest to the Isle of Man and to Laxey. I've spotted boat two again, so I'm gonna go and catch up with them. At this point, the other two vessels were so far away that they could only just be seen. Despite the exhilaration of being alone on the open seas, I couldn't help but feel exposed. We, we literally are in the middle of the sea right now. The waves changed, and with the current now in our favor, we raced off in the direction of Laxon, which was still over 30 miles away. This is where we are right now. It says that we're currently 28 nautical miles from Laxey, so that's not even Douglas. We've gone about 20 miles too far north. We have set a new course, and now we're going in the right direction and actually making progress. I think we just got uh, a bit disorientated by the crazy waves at the start, but now the current seems to be in our favor, and so we're gonna try and keep a steady pace and, and get to Laxey before midday, maybe. I'd say if it's 30 miles and it's now half past nine, midday. 
My estimation was, as usual, far too optimistic, and our journey was about to become much, much longer. You know, first details are now appearing on the island! Whoa, 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 whoa! Shit! Look at that! That's coming off. Fuck. Is this a disastrous moment? The green machine. That almost knocked my engine completely off. I had given it all I could with the Johnson. With our destination in view, it finally gave out, and I was forced to continue the crossing attempt with the trusty old four horse. Long ago, I see no failure of commissions. You can set off, and then we can tow you with the four going as well. We'll, we'll try the four on its own because the conditions are good. Yeah. And then we'll have a look at the tow. Happy team. Four's in. Nice one, boys. She's a lactic. Too light in the load on the Malta, Cobbo and his massive biceps boarded boat too, demoting him to a cabin boy. That's slow. We are currently over 20 miles from any land. We are in the middle of the sea. This was slow progress, and boat one was now barely pulling five knots. There's no rush at all, coaches. Laxey is 20 miles away. First time. First. This is the speed we can travel at the moment. Four horse Malta is giving it some big licks. Yeah. No respawns! <laughs> the power of the Yamaha Malta was nothing in comparison to the tidal current. Was this mission going to end in failure? Had we flown too close to the sun? Hang fire coach and I'll tell you, over. How far is that? 24 miles to Douglas coach. I repeat, 24.49 nautical miles. 18.35 nautical miles to Laxey. Get in coaches. Not over yet though coaches. We've all got a little seat on top of the gym flooring, so we're actually quite comfortable right now. Cobbo has managed to fall asleep twice. <laughs> it is that lovely out here. As we got closer, the strength of the current pulling us towards the Northern Channel was proving too much for boat one. We were forced to head after it to give it a tow before it was sucked off into the infamous cross currents north of the island. So the four horses died, and Rob is getting dangerously close to the tip of the Isle of Man. We've been pulled by the current north and we need to head further south. This is going to be a crazy rest of the mission. Still 25 miles to go ish and we need to get away from this north tip where the cross currents are. No, no! Oh, it's my, my clip. Medical one, this is West Hill. Get the tow ready for when we come past. We couldn't stop boat one from drifting, we would be in serious trouble, but the boys were unfazed by the task ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, I've got one. That's it. You ready? Oh, I'm, I'm dead again. Yeah? Yeah, go. Oh. I'm just doing what I can with the force. Should I keep you, going? Yeah, definitely. You didn't take the other side. Keep going, bro. This was, without question, the most tangled rope I had ever been given. The fading four horse highlighted the silence of the open sea, and I scanned the horizon and considered how far we were from anyone. Hold on a sec, I'm getting my engine back on. It makes sense that I keep holding on with the four horse. Over. Change your bearing. Yeah, yeah, I've got you. With Rob on the four horse, he's getting affected by the currents way more and he's getting pulled in. So we're gonna have to go and tow him. Let's go. Where do you want the rope? Through it. There's the end. Thank you, bro. I need a full load. I know, it's not a to fuck. Oh. Okay. Yeah, just the tangled through. These boys are gonna have to grab this side, yeah. Okay. Get yourselves in. Just go slow, boys. Yeah. And I'll get the four on as soon as he's ready. Whoa, whoa, slow, slow, slow. Hey, I'm getting pulled. I'm getting pulled. With ten less horsepower, the green immediately struggled with the chariot formation. This setup wasn't working, and we decided that it would be more effective to let the 25 take the full burden of boat one. Right, let's get to Laxey. This has been a crazy mission so far. We've pretty much been blown around the whole North Irish Sea. Our crawling pace would make the next section of our journey a nervous endeavor as we attempted to cross a busy shipping lane. We're in what looks to be a shipping lane, so we need to cross it. We could now see Ramsey Bay in greater detail, and upon passing the headland, the current eased and dry land felt closer than ever. We began to consider the tangible nature of success. Though the waves were still large, they were now consistent and in our favour. For once we could relax in the warming sun and take in the epic nature of our journey so far. These waves are fairly big. The green machine's getting chucked around a little bit, but it's only because I have to go slowly. And she's only small. We decided that the tiny secluded beach of Port Corner would be our point of first landing on the island. By this point, we had been on the water for nine hours, and the thought of finally completing our world record boosted morale once again. Yeah, so we hold it for like the next two minutes. Yes, get up! 
<laughs> Get in, man. Come on, you heroes. Every single one of you is a hero. Well done, the boys. I can't believe it. Oh. One small step for man. One giant leap for OIZ. Get up! Get up! Get up! Yes! Oh. Yeah. Dry land. <laughs> My knees ache. Yeah, I'm still swaying, bro. I'm fucked. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. Let's go, coach. Come here, mate. Let's that was go. unbelievable. This has been what everything this year has been training us for and making us prepared for. All of the gear has held out apart. Well, it's held out as much as it needed to, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. We were worried that we, something would go wrong, and it did. The, the Johnson died and the four horse made it here. I need a wee so badly, I'm gonna go for a wee. I can't believe that the green machine held for the whole way with the double puncture, the puncture in there and the puncture underneath. We didn't think it was gonna make it. It has lost a little bit of air, but it's got me here. So absolutely buzzing with that. What an experience, what a story to tell. We made it. And the water here is beautiful. It's so clear. Though the record had been set and we had crossed the Irish Sea, our journey was not over yet. Ahead of us was a further 10 miles of rough coastline to Douglas, so I loaded myself back into boat one and started up the four. By putting our minds together, the team had overcome the mighty Irish Sea and we felt like true explorers as the flotilla embarked on the final chapter of our journey. After soaking it in and giving Robert some time to gain ground, I returned to my trusty vessel with pride in my heart about its stunning performance. Ahead of us was the home stretch, and I opened up the 15 with the final destination feeling almost within my grasp. of relief washed over me and our accomplishment began to set in as we chugged southward down the coast. decided to pull into Laxey Beach for refreshments. I once again left the boys behind to slowly make my way to Douglas.
in the distance behind us. We headed to the lighthouse where our family would be staying for the week. There we waited for boat one so that we could make our entry to the harbour together. Our engine is crowked out. It's a non-runner. So the least expected to actually make it, the green machine is the only one running at the moment. So Tom's jumped ship and he's pulling us along with our anchor. The boys were finally back in formation and we limped into Douglas Harbour successful adventurers. We died! <laughs> yes, the football! Captain of OIZ has arrived! With his arse out. Get up! Mission complete. We had finally completed the mission, having conquered almost 60 miles of open sea. The crew had put their everything into this adventure. And through teamwork and determination, we had all achieved something incredible. The feeling of pride and relief in our hearts was unlike anything we had ever felt before. Pulling up in Douglas, going under the uh, under the bridges. Hopefully, we can find some on the wall to park up. Otherwise, it's the pontoons. Three inflatable boats with a combined length of only 1,200 centimeters were now moored in Douglas Marina. The first successful crossing to the Isle of Man in soft hull boats had been recorded and the team had earned themselves a moment of triumphant reflection. Just finished pizza. Just re-normalising. Get him. Pizza scrum. That was absolutely bonkers, wasn't it? Insane. Fully bonkers. Deserve a good pizza after that. <laughs> 